final series of mechanical properties of materials, I have uh, chosen three very important properties. One is the hardness, where I will explain that uh, how we do the qualitative testing as well as the quantitative testing of hardness and what is the relationship between hardness and strength, uh, which is very important in the design of a system. And then secondly, I will talk about creep and finally, I will talk about damping. So, these are the three important mechanical properties, which we will cover in this final series. So, first let us talk about the hardness. Now, hardness by definition, it is a measure of a material's resilience to localized plastic deformation. Okay. So, for example, a small indentation or a scratch. So, uh, let me repeat. So, it is a measure of materials resistance to localized plastic deformation. Example, a small indentation or a scratch. Now, uh, there are various advantages of hardness testing. First of all, it is a very simple and inexpensive test. You do not need a very special uh, sample preparation. Of course, for micro hardness you will need, which we will talk about it uh, subsequently. But for simple hardness testing, no special specimen preparation is needed and the apparatus is also relatively cheaper. So, one can carry out the hardness testing, uh, you know, in a relatively less expensive way. Secondly, it is considered to be a non-destructive method, because uh, you are really making a very small indentation without really affecting uh, the overall sample. And finally, uh, from the hardness test, you will not only get the hardness, but also you can get some important informations like say the tensile strength. Okay. So, this is a very important thing okay, that can be obtained from the hardness data. For example, for metals there is something called a Tabor relationship, okay, in which if you know one of the hardness data in the Brinell scale, uh, the H B data and then you should be able to actually uh, use that data uh, and then you can find out the ultimate tensile strength S u using this relationship, where x is n minus 2 and n varies between 2 to 2.7 and this is also known as the Mayer index. So, such you know this is just an example that how you can further exploit the hardness data and uh, find out uh, you know certain important properties. Now, hardness uh, generally uh, in, the, in the initial stage was used to be actually uh, found out through a very qualitative method, which we used to be mostly used by the geologists. And uh, that is based on the ability of one material to scratch another. Okay. So, in that scale, the geologists used to consider talc to be the softest material and it is uh, absolute hardness keeping it as one, then they you know various materials are used to actually scratch on talc and that uh, from the depth of uh, indentations and the power of scratching and then the scratching of one over the other, the ranking used to be done. So, from that scale if you see that from a very low hardness to a high hardness, you are getting uh, you know something like diamond as the highest hardness. 1600. So, that was a kind of a, of course, a very qualitative way of uh, you know determining the hardness. It can only give you an idea of relative hardness one with respect to the other. That suppose there are you are taking two materials and you are able to scratch material B with the help of material A and that would signify that the hardness of material A is more than the hardness of material B. So, that was a very qualitative method in the Mohs scale. At a later stage, you know the quantitative hardness tests uh, started to get even evolved and then uh, there are basically two classifications of them. One is called the macro hardness test, uh, where as I told you that not much of sample preparation is needed and the other group is called the micro hardness test. Now, in the macro hardness test, uh, there are many, but we have chosen Rockwell hardness test, Brinell hardness test and Vikers hardness test. And in the micro hardness test, the NUP micro hardness test and Vikers micro hardness test. So, total you know these are the five experiments that 
actually one can carry out in order to find out quantitatively the value of hardness. So, uh, the first one is the Rockwell hardness test. Now, uh, the basic principle as I told you that resistance to plastic deformation that is same in all the cases. So, the only thing is that what kind of a indenter the you are using in terms of you know like this indenter if you look at it the geometry of the indenter that actually varies from test to test. So, when we talk about a Rockwell hardness test first of all Rockwell hardness test employs two uh, different loads one is a minor load uh, okay, it is first applied uh, for good contact between the indenter and the sample surface and this followed by a major load and the depth of indentation is recorded on a dial gauge after removing the major load. Now, here the indenter is actually cone shaped indenter which is usually used for harder materials and sometimes for steel ball uh, for relatively less hard materials. And so, the sequence if you look at it that you first apply the minor load and then you apply the minor plus the major load and then you withdraw the major load. So, you have the minor load and then withdraw all of them and then measure the depth of penetration. Now, suppose you know what is the permanent increase in the depth of penetration due to major load. Okay. So, once you know that and then uh, you know there is a constant E which depends on the form of indenter. Okay. So, for example, uh, if you use diamond indenter you, you, you this is about 100 if you use steel wall indenter is about 130. So, then you can get H r Rockwell hardness number by actually simply subtracting this uh, small e from capital E. So, that is how you can get it. Now, in the H r a scale you know there are three scales of Rockwell scale. One is scale a which is known as H r a and there the indenter is cone shaped indenter. The load is usually 60 kg it is used for carbides and ceramics. So, that means it is used mostly for ceramics type of systems. Then the B scale of Rockwell HRB where we use the steel in a ball indenter the load is more here about 100 kg to create plastic deformation and then uh, the typical material is, is used in the non ferrous metals it is used. And then C, C is used mostly for steel. So, H R C scale and then once again you use a cone shape 150 kg load is used for ferrous metals and tool steels. So, that is the Rockwell hardness test okay. and this is a typical Rockwell hardness machine that you can see here as a Rockwell hardness machine. Now, uh, the other one that is uh, also very popular is called the Brinell hardness test. And this is used for also testing metals and non metals of low to medium hardness. Okay. So, Rockwell hardness uh, you include the ceramics also, whereas in this case it is mostly for metals and non metals of low to medium hardness. Now, uh, in this case, however, the indentation is done not by a cone, but by a hardened steel ball, as you can see it here that by a hardened steel ball okay, uh, or sometimes it is cemented carbide ball of 10 millimeter diameter is generally capital D that is what is generally conventionally used which is pressed into the surface of specimen using a load P of uh, either this load varies either 500 kg or 1500 or 3000 kg for a specified time and the time is generally between 10 to 30 seconds, minimum 10 seconds up to 30 seconds. Now, you know which load you are using, you know what is the diameter you are using and then all you have to do is that you have to find out this mean indentation diameter. That means, you know you get the indented shape and you calculate this diameter at two different points D 1 and D 2 and then take an average of it. So, that is what is our D and once you know D you can use uh, you know this formulation to find out the H B. And there is a thumb rule here and that is the tensile strength can be actually calculated directly as 3.45 times H B and uh, that is usually used for steel alloys. But as I told you earlier itself 
couple of slides before if you remember that generally uh, a more generalized relationship is actually this one, which is used in terms of finding out the uh, what you call uh, the strength uh, for various types of materials. So, this is not very material specific. Okay. Now, uh, we come to the Vickers uh, hardness test. Okay. Here, what is the difference? Unlike these uh, Brunel hardness test, the shape is different here as you can see that it is a square base uh, diamond pyramid indenter and which is generally having an angle of 136 degree uh, is between the opposite faces that is what is used in the Vickers hardness test. Okay. And in this case the hardness is obtained by dividing the load which is generally 1 to 120 kg with the surface area of the indentation and the surface area is calculated from the diagonals uh, you know of the length of the impression. So, here the impression is actually uh, you know uh, something like uh, in this case it is a square type of an indentation unlike the circular indentation that you have seen for the Brinell case. So, you uh, once you know this indentation size okay, then uh, you know that and you know the force that you are applying. So, 1.854 times that and F is the applied load in kg and uh, then you will be able to get the Vickers hardness test. So, that is how these three tests are used in terms of finding out the quantified value of the hardness data. Now, uh, sometimes what happens is that uh, this uh, hardness uh, is insufficient particularly when you will see that uh, you know you make a very very thin layer. Okay. So, this kind of general hardness is good for uh, when you have a single material, but many a times uh, what happens is that we give a special surface coating on metals. Okay. Let us say you know we talk, you know, when we actually work on things like suppose gears. Okay. So, you know uh, these are the suppose the faces of the gears and which works against another gear. Okay. So, a smaller gear. Now, so there is a continuous contact between the two. So, in this kind of surfaces, you know, you must give a special coating okay, on the cutting to uh, on the teeth of the gear. So, you give a special very thin, you know, uh, coating layer which is very hard. So, that you know to save it from wear and tear. Now, this kind of very thin coating layers, uh, you cannot really, you know, see that how uh, you, you cannot really use you know uh, the macro hardness tests for doing that. You need a micro hardness test for doing it. So, for such cases you know the micro hardness test comes into picture and the important thing here that the load applied here is much smaller because the indentation thickness is very low. Okay. Indentation itself is very small and sample preparation is definitely needed. Okay. So, there are two methods that is used loop hardness and Vickers micro hardness.